I know that Mike's favorite thing every week is to come on here and and talk about Monday Night Raw. And man, what a Raw we have to talk about here today. And Mike, your room looks good, but you shaved. Finally. Yes, I decided to shave for the show this week, but uh, live in studio and ready to go. And yeah, that was a Raw. It was... Uh... It was a lot of hard going with not a lot of uh, baby face rewards, if you will. Not a lot. Of, oh, wait a second. You're not Mike. <laughs> nope. You're Lance. Well, last time I checked. What the heck are you doing at this guy's house? Well, I figured if I'm going to replace Mike Sempervivi, I should do it in Mike Sempervivi's studio. So here I am, live from uh, Baltimore. Holy and, smokes. Yeah. But it doesn't uh, change the fact that uh, it appears that as uh, WWE fans, we were on the naughty list this year and didn't get a lot of presence on this Raw. Holy smokes. You know, Lance, I was talking on... This actually all began on Sunday when I tried to book the TLC pay-per-view. And I thought, well, you know, holiday edition, we got in with happy endings, so... I had this whole idea for Drew and Miz and the cash-in and the fans go home happy at the end of the show. And they actually did that, but they did it in the opener. (laughs) Yes. So then I'm thinking, well, how do you end the holiday edition of TLC? They end it by burning some dude to a crisp, up in smoke, a baby face, mind you. It wasn't even they burnt a heel to a crisp on Christmas. So then I'm watching Raw, and they literally open up saying, it's a holiday edition of Monday Night Raw. And I thought, oh, man, a bunch of baby face wins here today. <laughs> Hi, Paisley. I'm <laughs> Run in. We, we had a run in here by, by Paisley. Baby face running. I watched the show, and the holiday edition, heel goes over. Heel goes over. Heel goes over. Heel goes over. Heel, and I'm not even joking, five times the heel went over. And so finally this leads me to the big announcement that on Christmas Day, Sami Zayn defends the Intercontinental title against Big E. Actually, there's three title matches on the show, but... I don't think Kevin Owens is beating Roman Reigns in the cage match. And we don't even know who the tag team championships are going to be defended against. But Charlotte's on the team, so no one's beating them right now. So I thought, okay, one happy ending on SmackDown. Big E is going to beat Sami Zayn. He's going to win that title. Now, after the after the cremation on Sunday and the heel wins on Raw, now I'm not even sure, Lance. So if you had to take a guess... Do you think Big E's winning this title on Christmas, or are we? Or will our hopes be dashed? I hope to God Big E's like Big E should be winning, even if it wasn't Christmas. In my opinion, I, I think you know when they broke up New Day, there was all the hype and interest in giving Big E that push that he everyone feels he deserves. And I agree; I think he'd be a good you know top babyface. They need some top babyfaces. And uh, I'd like to think on Christmas Day they're going to make us happy with uh, a. A, uh, a Big E celebration, one would hope. Well, I certainly hope so. So very quickly, everybody, yesterday, if you if you missed the Raw show, you should thank your lucky stars. So, and by the way, just to remind all of you, I mean, this was the show where last week they did the all-time record low rating, and so they had six days to come up with a plan to turn things around. This is what they came up with. So we had a big, long segment with Charlotte, that was interrupted by Nia and Shayna, and then Mandy and Dana, and this led to a match which, God bless everybody involved, I thought this was one of the worst Raw matches of the entire year. It was just Dana and Mandy, God bless them, they could not do anything in this match. Even, like, of all people, Nia was like a ring general here in this match. That should tell you something about this one. And then the heels won. We had the Hurt Business celebrating their title win, which led to Jeff Hardy and Matt Riddle coming out to set up a match for later. Angel Garza beat Drew Gulak. He'll win. We had a Miz TV segment with Miz and AJ and all of these different dudes here. And long story short, this also led to a six-man in the main event with three baby faces: Drew McIntyre, Keith Lee, and Sheamus, who, like, they can't get along. Well, that that's the thing that I think struck me the most watching this show is there were so many little things that by placing them where they were made me less interested in what was coming up next. Like right when the women's tag match started, they announced that the women's tag team champions are fighting Lacey and Peyton. And I was like, oh, I thought this match was for to determine who was going to face them. So it felt like 
they made that opening tag match less important as soon as it started by saying that tag champs are fighting somebody else. And then the other thing I, th I thought really interesting is that it used to be a thing that, you know, back in my day, you'd always hate when you were in a backstage segment or a talking segment before your match because it kind of killed your pop because they got to see you already. And there was several inch, almost every match where we saw guys once or twice before their match, which if I've seen you twice, I'm less excited to see you that third time. And then equally with the main event, with the three baby faces, especially after we didn't have any for so long, fighting throughout the whole show, it's like it made me less interested in the main event because I was less suspecting a baby face win. So I, I think those little things are contributing to lack of interest in the matches and later in the show i think they could be hurting ratings well the other interesting thing you mentioned the charlotte dealer charlotte like literally she was being challenged for the titles and then another team came out and so she essentially said like you guys wrestle like the way that charlotte explained it as a viewer you thought it was a number one contenders match and then yes. <laughs> i mean it wasn't and the other thing too yes when when you do a long talking segment and it's just talk and talk and talk and talk. And, and then you set up a match. Like normally, as a viewer, I think, okay, I sat through all that talking. At least now we're going to get the match. So when they did the long talking segment and then sent everybody to the back, and then we go to another talking segment, it's like Angel Garza backstage. I'm like, can I have a match already? And then I don't have the time, but there was like, what? 10 minutes of wrestling in two hours once we actually got the matches. It was like a very low uh, amount of wrestling that we actually got on this show. And uh, it's very difficult for me to sit through all of this talking. And then when they finally get in the ring, it's like, you know, the Ricochet T-Bar match. What was that? Two minutes after all of this talking. And yes, Ricochet, once again, got beaten by somebody in Retribution. He's losing to everybody on Retribution and root to the top guy in Retribution, which... I mean, knowing them, he'll win, which doesn't make it's, it's any the, sense. It's the reverse gauntlet match. You lose everyone till the end, and then if you don't win any of them, you have to join. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then he goes on on Raw Talk afterwards, and, like, it's Charlie, R-Truth, and Ricochet, okay? And Ricochet is like a comedy guy, and so he's, like, trying to give Ricochet a pep talk, but it's like a bunch of comedy stuff. And then Charlie's actually really good. She's asking these probing questions, and she's like, dude, you know, you've lost. I mean, why not join? And then she even says, you know, Ricochet, if you join Retribution, maybe, like, your good deeds could rub off on them. Maybe you could make a difference. And I thought, we never see any deep thinking like that on the actual television show, but we see it on Raw Talk. And literally, they bring him to tears. He's crying about his lot in life on Raw. I was like, oh, my God. So we had Riddle and Jeff Hardy versus Lashley and MVP. Lashley beats Jeff Hardy. Another heel win. Grand Metallic and Jackson Riker. Jackson Riker beats a guy. Another heel win. One minute. Randy Orton comes out to celebrate burning some bloke to death. Burnt him to a crisp. He's celebrating. He couldn't be happier. And then the lights go out, and I had some big argument with somebody on the Twitch feed here a couple of, like, a week ago. And they were so mad at me for having the temerity to say that Alexa Bliss is playing like an 11-year-old. Dude, they shut the lights off, and they come back on, and she's on a swing set, a fake playground in the middle of the ring, swinging back and forth, asking Randy Orton to come to the playground and play with her. She's making jokes about the, the fiend being burnt to a crisp. And then she promises that he'll be back. Oscar and Charlotte versus Peyton and Lacey. They... Babyface finally won two minutes and 22 seconds into the show. And then we had the bizarre street fight where everybody politely tagged in and out and obeyed all the rules. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.